All right, in this video, we are going to look at M.1.2 in the ATIT study manual for math, and that goal really revolves around you being able to do order of operations. Uh, order of operations, PEMDAS, maybe you've heard of Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Sally, maybe you've heard of Purple Elephants May Destroy a School. It's just a way for you to remember the order in which you do operations on integers. In this case, that's what we're messing with here is integers. Uh, we'll see fractions later on in the series of math tutorials for the ATIT's math portion of the test. But the first thing we want to do when we're doing order of operations is look for, look for parentheses, take care of those, then deal with some exponents, then multiplication and division. You do not always multiply before you divide. It depends on which one comes first from left to right. That's a common mistake I see with students when they do order of operations. They they think they're always supposed to multiply before they divide and that's not the case. It depends on which one comes first from left to right. And we're going to see that right down here in these two examples right here in a moment. The same thing applies to addition and subtraction and we'll see that in a few minutes as well because I have one, two, three, four examples here and then I have this one to kind of uh, come back and at the end as a grand finale, I guess, because you may see a problem like this on the ATIT's math portion of the test. Now, calculator. Uh, the four-function calculator, it may do order of operations. It may not. I, I haven't held a, a four-function calculator that they use in the for the ATIT's test. So we want to make sure to play uh, better safe than sorry, right? We want to make sure we can do the order of operations and just use the calculator to do the basic arithmetic. Um, where we're trying to multiply big numbers or divide some big numbers or add big numbers or whatever. So we'll still use the calculator here, but I want us to make sure that we understand the order of operations. And in this first example that we have, we got 36 minus 10 times 2 divided by 5 minus 11. Okay, <laughs> no parentheses. Exponents, no exponents. We won't see any exponents in this video. I think we will see some later on in the series, but for now, no. Multiplication and division come before addition and subtraction. So we definitely want to multiply and divide before we add and subtract. So let's multiply these two numbers. And the reason why I'm saying multiply these two first is because multiplication comes first from left to right. All right, so let's multiply those and we get 20. And just bringing everything else down, now what you're probably going to want to do on the T's test is once you become fluent with this, you might not want to do every single step like I'm doing in this video, but I want to point out some things you don't want to do. For example, here, you don't want to take 36 minus 20. We didn't want to take 36 minus 10. We had to multiply. We don't want to subtract yet. We still have to divide here. So multiply and divide from left to right. Then we worry about our addition and subtraction. So here we get 36, subtract, 20 divided by 5 will give us 4, and then we have minus 11. Now this is when I would say, hey, it's safe pretty much to use any calculator to do the rest of your operations to save time. 36, subtract 4, of course we know that's going to be 32, and I don't know what I'm doing here. 36 minus 4, we get 32, and then we want to subtract 11 more from that, so we get a final answer of 21. But again, that's probably something that maybe you can do in your head anyway. But, you know, don't, don't forget you do have the calculator there to speed up some computation where we will see that right here in this one probably. All right. So no parentheses, no exponents, multiplication and division. Yes, we do see both of those. Do not, do not, do not do this first. You want to divide first. This is a, a I bet you if you gave this problem to... 10 people, half of them would probably end up multiplying 2 times 3 first because they think they're supposed to multiply before they divide. You do that from left to right. We want to divide 36 divided by 2 first, then we worry about multiplying by 3. So we have 5 plus 36 divided by 2 is 18. I'm just going to bring down everything else. And now we want to multiply. This is where we multiply. And if you did this out of order, you would get an incorrect answer. It would not work out correctly. So make sure you obey an order of operations here. 18 times 3 is what we want to worry about next. So 5 plus, and that's where the calculator never hurts to have it handy. So 18 times 3, that's going to be, what, 54, I think? Yes, yeah, so 54. And then we have minus 4 that we're just bringing on down. Now, addition and subtraction is all we have left, and we want to do this from left to right. So we're going to add first because that's the first operation that comes up from left to right. 
So 5 plus 54 is 59. 59 minus 4 is going to be 55 for our final answer there. Order of operations. All right. Two more. Now we got some parentheses thrown into the mix. So when you have parentheses, I don't care what's inside of it. You want to do that stuff first. So that's what I'm talking about here. Yeah, it's addition. And you might say, well, I thought you said we're supposed to multiply and divide before we add and subtract. But you're supposed to always handle and take care of those parentheses first when you're dealing with order of operations. So therefore, we have 9 times 48. I'm going to bring down my division, and I'm going to take 3 plus 5. That gives us 8. And then we're going to subtract 13. So now we have a multiplication, we have a division, and we have a subtraction. We want to multiply and divide before we add or subtract according to order of operations. And we want to do this from left to right. So since we have multiplication first, we're going to do that. So 9 times 48. 9 times 48 is going to give us 432. So you might keep your calculator right there where it is because what are we going to turn around and do with this 432 right here in a moment? We're going to turn right back around and divide that 432 by 8. So take that 432, let's divide it by 8. That gives us 54. And of course, you can do all of these operations at one time on your calculator. You may have to clear, like I said, the, the four function calculator may operate a little bit differently than the way I'm dealing with uh, this one up here. And I mentioned that in the first video as well. But we want to subtract 13 from this to give us a final answer of 41. Again, let's go back through that real quick. Let me show you some shortcuts that you can get through this very quickly. We know that we have to do this first, but let me show you some different approaches to speed up this process. Regardless, I know we're going to get 8 there, but aren't we still going to multiply 9 times 48 too? And then we tie in the 432 with that 8. You see the order of operations, what I'm talking about here? We're, we're going to multiply these. Yeah, we're supposed to add first, but if I take 9 times 48 from my first step, there's truly nothing wrong with that. As long as you remember to come back and divide by everything that we get inside of this parentheses, which we divide by 8 because 3 plus 5 is 8. So that gives us 54. And then we want to subtract 13 from that. We get 41. So trying to show you how to maybe speed that process up a little bit in your calculator. Now let's look at this one here. So 16 subtract. I'm bringing it on down. 24 minus 4 gives us 20. Then we have times 3 plus 19. So notice I went ahead and took care of the parentheses right there. Now, do we want to take 16 minus 20? Nope. We want to multiply first. We want to multiply and divide before we add and subtract. So therefore we have 16 minus 20 times 3 is going to give us 60 plus 19. Now, here in this example, I don't think they actually talk about, maybe they do mention some negative numbers uh, within the computations, but nonetheless, we need to talk about them anyway because you're going to run into them. So 16 minus 60, you want to be careful with that. Depending on how that ca uh, calculator really works, 16 minus 60, if I press enter, this calculator will spit out negative 44 because 16 take away 60 is going to definitely be a negative number. Um, I'll go over some addition and subtraction rules later on in the series, but be careful because I do know some four function calculators will throw a negative way over here or over here and they might not put it right in front of that number. But 16 take away 60, we're taking away more than what we had, that's why we are getting a negative number there. And then what are we going to do? Notice what I did actually also is that I subtracted before I added. Some students think they're always supposed to add before they subtract, and that's not the case. You want to subtract if it comes, you want to subtract first if it comes before addition. We're doing that from left to right. Addition and subtraction from left to right. So 16 minus 60 gives us negative 44 plus 19. We can go back to our calculator there. It's still going to lead to a negative answer. We get a final answer of negative 25. And before I jump into that last problem, let me go ahead and throw out the rules that I talk myself through as I'm doing arithmetic. That's what this stuff is really, is arithmetic. 16 take away 60. Well, I'm telling myself, hey, I'm taking away more than what I got. And really, I think of this as being two different signs. I think of this 16 as being a positive 16. I think of this 60 as being a negative 60. Well, I'm still, if I didn't have a calculator, I would still subtract these numbers like that. 
you can do that. When your signs are different, a positive number and a negative number, and you're trying to add or subtract them together, you want to subtract the two numbers like you typically would in everyday life, and 60 minus 16 will give you 44. But what I tell myself is, is I want to keep the sign of the bigger of these two numbers. Well, isn't 60 bigger than 16? And 60 had a minus sign with it. So that's why I use a negative 44 right there. That's how I would do that in my head without a calculator. Let me go back up here and take away this pink circle. But again, what I tell myself is this. When signs are different, when signs are different, when you have a positive, and I think of this as a negative 60, we subtract them. That gives us 44, but we want to keep the sign of that bigger number. So that's how we get negative 44. Now let's think about this step right here, negative 44 plus 19. Your signs are different, right? That's a negative 44. That's a positive 19. Subtract them like you always do. What's 44 subtract 19? That's going to be 25. You may have to do some borrowing here and there to get these numbers. But now is it a positive 25 or a negative 25 if we go back and look at this? Remember what I said a while ago? When your signs are different, subtract them and keep the sign of the bigger number. 44 has a negative sign, so negative 25 is how we get to that answer right there. I hope that makes sense. And now this last one here. You, you will see this on the T's test, I'm pretty sure, because it's definitely in your ATIT study manual. Well, we don't have any parentheses here. All we see is this long fraction bar, and what you want to do is work everything out in the top, work everything out in the bottom, and then you come back and look at this fraction bar. So that's going to be like our last step is to really divide. Essentially, a fraction bar is division. But you can see it written like this as well. This is the exact same problem. Notice I'm putting all of that stuff in my numerator. The top part of that fraction, that's called a numerator. I'm putting all of that in parentheses. And then I'm putting a division. And now I'm putting another set of parentheses. This is where I put the bottom in. So 10 minus 10 divided by... Two, this blue thing, this blue fraction bar that you see right here is the same thing as division. Now, even though we don't see parentheses over here, this is the way we want to think about it. We want to work all this stuff out. We want to work all this stuff out using order of operations correctly. And then we come back and worry about the division, which is what that fraction bar is telling us to do. But be extra careful here as well as you are working these things out because you still want to do order of operations with the stuff inside of parentheses. So 3 times 6, we definitely want to multiply this before we add the 17. We don't want to take 17 plus 3. Mm -mm. You want to multiply first, so 18. Bring down the 17. And let's just go ahead and add those together now. 17 plus 18 will give us a 35. So we have worked everything out in that yellow part to get 35, and that should be yellow. Let's do the same thing for this one over here. Do we want to take 10 minus 10 first? Nope, we want to divide before we subtract. So 10 divided by two will give us five, and now we have 10 subtract five, because I'm just bringing the 10 and the subtraction down for a final piece here of five. That's our bottom part. We worked out the top completely, now we've worked out the bottom completely. And now what do we want to do to these two things? We want to divide them. That is what that fraction bar represents right there. So we have divide by 5. And what's 35 divided by 5? We don't need a calculator for that. That is 7. So that's a tricky one because we don't have the parentheses, but we're kind of treating them like that. They're, I guess you can think of them as being ghost or invisible parentheses. When you have a long fraction bar, work everything out at the top, work everything out at the bottom, and then for your last step, come back and apply that fraction bar, which is the same thing as division. And there you have it. That's uh, what, four or five examples of dealing with order of operations, some common questions that you may see on the ATIT's test math portion. And that is it for this video. Hope it helped.